Hi, my name is Jason Horn. I am the attendance supervisor, among other things, here with Campbell County Schools. And I wanted to do a brief video on our attendance policy. I know that there's been a lot of information out there and some misinformation out there. Uh, so I just wanted to do a brief video to clear that up. And uh, hopefully you're seeing this and getting it. One of the reasons that we have a new attendance policy is because the Tennessee State School Board Association also has a new policy uh, based on a new uh, legisla legislation that was passed in response to chronic absenteeism, and we will uh, talk about what that is. But the uh, new policy requires districts to set up tiers in order to identify causes for students who miss school. So. In, a, in other words, instead of just making your attendance a policy about how can you get, the, get it excused and uh, what do you have to do to end up in court, now we have a tier system that hopefully identifies students who have been uh, missing and get to them before they have to go to court. Now keep in mind, before I talk about our tier system, students are by law considered truant if they have five unexcused absences. So let's talk about our tier system. Tier one, that's if you have three unexcused absences, and this is if you either don't have parent notes that uh, meet the requirement for an excused absence, or if you have already exhausted the five parent notes, which we will talk about in a minute, uh, and then you have ex unexcused absences on top of that. This is a school-based meeting where you're meeting with school personnel only, and those folks just want to know, hey, why are you missing? What can we do to get you here? How can we help you? Tier two is when you get to five unexcused absences. And again, this is either with invalid parent notes or after the five parent notes are exhausted. So this could be that you've actually missed 10 days of school. Uh, this is a meeting with school personnel and the attendance office. So that would be either with me or with Nancy Leach. And we would have the same sort of conversation, except we would bring in even more community resources. Uh, if there's a chronic illness or something like that, if that hasn't been addressed, we want to know about it at that point. Hopefully that would be addressed in Tier 1, but this is another chance for us to address it. If there are things going on in the home that we can help out with, anything uh, to get you to school. So that's Tier 2. Tier three is when you get to 10 unexcused absences. So let's just say that you've exhausted the five parent notes. That's 15 absences. And in, 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 uh, in our school system, that would be three weeks of school. Um, in, uh, if you're in one of our high schools, that would be actually one sixth of the semester if you've gotten to 15 unexcused days. So that's, that's a lot of time. So, uh, that's you would have another meeting with the attendance office. It's a little bit more serious. It's sort of a pre-trial um, kind of deal where we talk to you and we bring in, um, you know, someone from DCS. We bring in someone uh, from the court, probation, and just talk about how serious this has gotten. If you're up to ten unexcused absences, and our whole goal is uh, either to convince you or scare you that you can't be absent anymore, uh, because at that point, like I said, if you've exhausted those five parent notes and you have ten unexcused absences, if there's not a good reason for those, any additional absences will be then tier four, and that's where you go to truancy court. And the reason you would go to truancy court is because we have had at this point, three meetings with you. We have tried to identify any sort of problem that that has arisen that would keep you from being to school on time. So at that point in truancy court, it can only be a few things. Either the student refuses to go to school, or it is a chronic illness that we um, are helping you address. So if it's a chronic illness situation, you would not be in truancy court. The only reason that anybody should ever be in truancy court is because of a willful indifference to going to school. In other words, you just don't want to go. And so therefore you have broken the law. The parents broken the law, the students broken the law. And our goal, frankly, is to never have students in truancy court. We know that it's going to happen, but our goal is to have nobody there 
for truancy. Um, because there's really no, in our minds, there's really no reason that a student should ever just not go to school. Never. Only if they're ill, which would be excused. So again, truancy court is for anybody who has more than 10 unexcused absences. So there's no reason to have that many unexcused absences. If there's an underlying problem, within the three meetings before, we should have identified it and come up with a solu solution to the problem. So you do get five parent notes each year. Uh, and uh, the parent notes must be turned within five school days of the student's return to school. So let's say that uh, Joey is out Monday and Tuesday, uh, and it's, it's just a virus. It's not serious enough to take him to the doctor, or you don't really have the money to cover the copay, so you don't send them to the doctor, so they're out Monday or Tuesday. So then you write a parent note for Monday and Tuesday, and Joey has Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, and Tuesday to get that note in. Um, I think as a parent, probably the best practice would just be send it to with Joey uh, when he gets back to school. Um, but I get it, life gets in the way sometimes, we forget things. So, But you've got five days to get that in. If you don't get that in within five days, then you forfeit the parent note. I mean, it's. I feel like five days is a very generous amount of time to get that in. Uh, the parent note must be for one of the following reasons. A personal illness, the illness of immediate family member, a death in the family, uh, extreme weather conditions, religious observances, college visits, pregnancy, school-sponsored or school-endorsed activities, a summons, subpoena, or a court order, or circumstances in which the judgment of the principal constitutes an emergency outside of the student's control. Uh, and that would have to be a, a, a pretty extreme thing, but I get it. Uh, for example, if you uh, live on a farm and you've got like 50 head of cattle and the cattle all break out and they're all over the valley and uh, students needed to help herd those cattle back in, that is an emergency outside of the student's control. That one might be excused. Uh, hopefully this doesn't set off a rash of fences being broke, broken down uh, for their cattle, but I'm just saying that that would be a good example of that. So you do get five parent notes. You need to use them judiciously, and I have told principals do not sign a parent note as an excused absence if it does not meet this criteria. If so if you come in and say, well, Jimmy didn't want to go, that is not a reason to excuse a student from school that's just an unexcused absence. You will hear about chronic absenteeism. I don't feel like chronic absenteeism is something that the general public really needs to know a lot about. It, it's something for which we are held accountable. Uh, basically what the state does is look at our total number of students, look at the number of students who missed 18 or more days, and that percentage of our population is considered our chronic absenteeism numbers. Last year, we had close to 21% of our students who were considered chronically absent. So that's one-fifth. So if you want to visualize that, put 10 dimes in your pocket and then take two of them and throw them in the river. And the, the, the two dimes in the river are how many that we had who were chronically absent. So one-fifth of our students is a lot. Uh, at some schools, it was higher than a, than the other, and so that's one reason that we are really making a big effort this year to improve our school attendance. Uh, and we'll talk about the reasons why, but basically, if students aren't at school, they're not learning. They're not improving, and there are other reasons, too. So, again, a student's considered chronically absent if she misses more than 10% of the school year, which is 18 days, and that's either excused or unexcused. Now, if it's excused, that means it is not the student's fault that they missed. And some students who are medically fragile are exempt from this. Uh, so, you know, some of that stuff is on us if it's excused. Uh, we want that, we, we always know that we're never going to have 0% uh, chronically absent. I mean, it's just impossible with uh, a student population as high as us. But the fewer unexcused we can have, the better off we will be. 
And again, individual schools and we as a district are held accountable for our chronic, chronic absenteeism rate because that is something, you know, we can't come to your house and grab a kid by the year and, and drag them into school, but we need to be making as much effort as we can to get them to our schools. So what are the reasons to come to school? Well, as I said previously, students who don't come to school don't learn. So they get behind and it's hard to catch up unless they work extra hard. Uh, then it becomes a burden on teachers to grade makeup work and give makeup work and, and rewrite tests and that sort of thing, which gives them less time to uh, give great feedback on assignments and that sort of thing. It makes it difficult to make adjustments to instruction. So let's say if you're a teacher and you have, uh, you know, one fifth of your class out and you give a test, well, you only know how four fifths of your class did. It's hard to know whether you need to go back and reteach it. And even further, if a student's behind and they don't do well on something, then even more reteaching needs to be done to that individual child. So it just makes the organization and structure of a class that much more difficult on teachers, which is a difficult job to begin with. And finally, it's the law. If you look at uh, Tennessee Code Annotated 49.6-3001, it says clearly there, uh, if you are a parent of a child between 6 and 17 years old, they have to go to school. And if they don't, they and you can suffer uh, penalties. Uh, and it's our job as a school system, and I just said penalties and I meant penalties. It's our job as a school system to report that to the proper authorities. And the state even says we can at five unexcused absences. We're doing it a little bit later than that, but that's because our tier system is trying to give people as much of a chance as we can to keep them out of court because that's not where we want them to be. And finally, how do you get your child to school every day? Uh, the biggest one that we've seen is uh, students are not getting a good bedtime, especially older students. Uh, establish routines for bedtime. Make sure the child's getting eight to 10 hours of sleep. Uh, and I know like with uh, high school age students, when they're doing sports until late and everything, maybe that's a big ask, but it's not a big ask to get them to school every day. Uh, lay out clothes and school items the night before. That way you're not rushing around in the morning trying to get them. Um, research says to cut out electronics and or television about 30 minutes before bedtime. Uh, and then on the positive side, try to get the child excited about learning and involved in school activities. And keep in mind that your attitude as a parent goes a long way towards the child's attitude towards school. So if you have nothing but negative things to say about school, then your child is likely to adopt that attitude. And I read a lot of Facebook, so I know it's out there. And also have a backup plan in case you have transportation issues, whether our buses don't run or if you take your child to school and the car doesn't start one morning, what's your backup plan to get them there? And as long as you get them there, you know, um, within a certain amount of time, if they're just considered tardy, that's certainly not as bad as being absent. I don't want them to be tardy every day, but, you know, stuff happens. And that would be an excuse tardy anyway if your car didn't start. So uh, that's how you get your child to school every day. We are here to help. You can contact me or Nancy Leach at the central office. We're always glad to, to help find solutions to this. I uh, hope to never see you in court, but if I see you in a tiered meeting, I would uh, just remember that we're just there to help, to help you get your child to school every day any way we can, because ultimately we want your kids at our school so they can learn. It's not about money. It's not about anything else. It's about getting them there so they can learn, so we can be the best school system that we can possibly be. And we're never going to be that if only if one-fifth of our students are not showing up to school on a regular basis. Thank you for watching. I know this went long. Uh, if you have any questions, just uh, post them in the comments and I will try to answer them.